Hello everyone. I'm very excited to share the patch notes for the Tuna Metapack 1.2 version with you. In this update, we focused on just one keyword, automation. While we haven't made every process a one-click operation, we targeted areas where simple, repetitive tasks consume a significant amount of time. Our goal was to automate those parts as much as possible. Also, towards the end of the video, I'll be covering some very important points related to DNA, so even if the video runs a bit long, I hope you'll stay until the end. There's a special gift for those who use our tool at the very end as well. Great, now let's take a look at the updates starting with Mesh Warp. In fact, I believe this Mesh Warp update might be the pinnacle of our automation efforts. Let's assume you already have a fully adjusted combined LOD zero mesh. Under the previous workflow, you would be loading the template in Mesh Warp, registering the driver, adding the driven meshes, and tweaking various settings, an overwhelming process. However, in version 1.3, we've introduced a new tab called MetaHuman Automated. This tab offers a powerful one-click solution that allows you to generate all LODs based solely on the MetaHuman mesh, streamlining the entire process. The usage is very simple. First, rename your combined LOD0 mesh with a proper name. Just make sure that the name doesn't overlap with existing templates. As long as it doesn't duplicate the template names, you can actually change it to anything you'd like. Now, register this mesh into the tool. The two templates you see in this tab refer to the templates that will be used during the auto setup process. You can also check the options in the checkbox to decide whether to split the head mesh and body mesh, and whether to generate additional meshes like eyeballs afterward. I'll check the option to split the head and body. Additionally, I'll select the desired head template from here and generate extra meshes automatically as well. In the original workflow, you would have had to load and delete templates in the Mesh Warp tab at least three times to complete this process. However, this time, the entire workflow will be automated. As the Run button indicates, the entire process is executed with just one click, so make sure to check the options according to your needs. Now that the setup is complete, let's take a look. As you can see, all the combined LODs have been generated at once, and the names have been perfectly updated. Afterward, you can verify that the head and body were split according to the checkbox selection. Exactly eight LODs were generated for the head mesh, and for those familiar with our previous tutorials, you'll know that these meshes will later replace all the facial rigging meshes. Similarly, four LODs were generated for the body mesh, and since these meshes will be used for the actual body rigging without replacement, their names have also been correctly updated. Now, you might wonder if the seam line between the head and body meshes matches. Of course, it's automatically aligned. This is a feature already implemented in Mesh Warp, so it's an obvious outcome. Additionally, since we checked the option to generate extra meshes, you can see that meshes like eyeballs and eyelashes have also been automatically generated. Although the eyeballs in this character are slightly smaller and not perfectly generated, this is due to the existing settings in the Mesh Warp pipeline. You can further modify them using the parameters attached to the mesh to make any necessary adjustments. Also, since the last settings used in the Mesh Warp tab are saved, you can refer to any part that might be helpful to you. Now I'm going to delete these settings and bake the current mesh. As you can see, there are no more setting parameters. Let's manually adjust the left eyeball for a moment. After removing the Mesh Warp settings, there used to be a situation where you had to finalize one side of the eyeball and then mirror it, right? Previously, you'd have to manually enter values and match the vertex IDs to perform the mirror process. Now you can simply use the mirror eyeball function in the MetaHuman Utils tab within Tuna Utils. Select the source eyeball first, then choose the target eyeball and click the Compute button. After that, make sure to rename the opposite eyeball correctly. 
since it is aligned to the vertex IDs of the opposite eyeball, there won't be any reversed effects, so you can rest easy. Great. That wraps up the updates to Mesh Warp. Now, let's take a look at the updates to the MetaHuman set. When using the Pose Wrangler, some of you might have wondered whether it only works with MetaHumans. Actually, that's not the case. This tool is highly specialized for rigging setups and can be used for a variety of purposes. Epic Games' Pose Wrangler performs RBF, radial basis function, operations based on custom settings. In other words, even if you're not working with metahuman joints, you can still create your own solvers and set them up in various scenarios. As a test, I'll create a custom setup. As you can see, it's incredibly easy to generate a solver, register the objects as the driver and driven, and then add poses to apply the settings. Some of you may have already applied the Pose Wrangler to your character's clothing or other rigging setups for different situations. So, what's new in the MetaHuman set? In previous versions, if you press the Bake All UE RBF Poses button, it would bake the movement data of all solvers into keyframes, causing both the MetaHuman solvers and your custom solvers to blend together increasing the keyframe count. Essentially, everything would get baked. This would create major issues when transferring the pose assets into the engine. In this update, we've addressed this issue. Now, the Bake All UE RBF Poses button only bakes MetaHuman solver settings. So, even if you add custom solvers using Pose Wrangler, it won't interfere. Another concept added to the MetaHuman set is the mirror function for up vector locators. In the previous version, you likely had to open tuna utils, go to the mirror multi-object section, rename the locators as left and right, and manually select them to perform the mirroring. Now, this function is conveniently included in the MetaHuman set itself. You can simply select the locators you want to mirror, or if nothing is selected, you can mirror all the up vectors at once in the desired direction. As I've emphasized in previous lessons, up vectors are extremely important, and improving the ease of mirroring them was a priority in this update. That wraps up the updates for the MetaHuman set. Now, let's move on to the DNA editor. In previous versions, extra meshes were generated automatically during the initial transfer. However, these auto-generated extra meshes often had issues, such as the eyeballs getting distorted. In this version, many of those issues have been resolved. Of course, manually creating meshes with Mesh Warp will always provide the most accurate results. But if you want to complete the entire setup in one go, using only the head LOD zero mesh, without preparing other meshes, using the automatically generated meshes here could be a reasonable option. After all, the same settings as Mesh Warp are applied, except users cannot manually adjust the vertices. In previous versions, when using the Swap Selected Mesh feature, you could replace extra meshes all at once, but you couldn't replace all the head LOD meshes at the same time. Now, as you can see on the screen, you can select all head LOD meshes at once and swap them using this feature. This means that if you replace all the head LODs during the initial transfer, you won't need to go back into Tuna Utils or DNA Editor later to replace each LOD one by one. The reason you need to swap all the head LOD meshes, as explained in previous lessons, is that the head mesh created via transfer and the split head mesh generated by Mesh Warp are slightly different. This slight difference can result in visible seams or holes when the head and body are together as we've discussed before. So, starting from this version, you can simply select all the head LOD meshes at once during the transfer process, just like with the extra meshes, and press the Swap Selected Mesh button. This eliminates the need to manually locate and replace each LOD one by one and you won't encounter any visible seams or holes between the head and body at lower LODs. In previous versions, aligning the eyeball joint required switching to skin off mode, copying the eyeball, centering it, and going through a series of complex steps. Now, this process has been automated with the auto match eye joints button. After finalizing the shape of the eyeball, you simply press this button and it will automatically align both left and right pupil joints for you. 
However, please note that this feature only works with MetaHuman Eyeball topology. It won't function for custom eyeball meshes, so keep that in mind. Now I want to share a very important piece of information regarding DNA. From now on, when you open DNA in the DNA viewer, there's one key thing to keep in mind. If you go to the DNA files folder within your Tunerig folder in Documents, you'll notice that there are now separate folders for old and latest. In fact, not all DNA files are the same version. The early DNA developed by 3Lateral and the latest DNA versions used in modern engines have different structures. All the DNA files we've provided and those you've received from the DNA calibration library are based on the older versions. Some of you may already be aware of this, while others might not. From now on, when you want to use the older version of DNA, you must use the GUI path labeled with older. The analog GUI path can still be used as before, and the additional assemble script path should also be the one marked as older. Conversely, when using the latest version of DNA, you need to use the GUI path labeled with latest. The analog GUI path can be used regardless of the version, and the additional assemble script path should be the one marked as latest. So, why is it necessary to distinguish between old and latest? Let me show you the differences. In the comparison of the two rigs, the one on the left, which is white, is the latest DNA rig, while the gray one on the right is the old DNA rig. Let's start by examining the joint count for the latest DNA rig. As indicated, it has 870 joints, correct? Now, looking at the joint count for the old DNA rig, we see it has 865 joints. There's a clear difference in the number of joints right from the start. This difference in joint counts is significant because it could lead to problems when importing into the engine. If you use a facial skeletal mesh set up with the latest DNA and attempt to use the old version of DNA or vice versa, you could encounter compatibility issues that may affect the functionality of your rig. As you can see, there are also differences in the names of several controllers on the control board. In the old version, the tongue controller is named Control C Tongue, while in the latest version, it's named Control C Tongue Move. Additionally, Control C Tongue Roll has been renamed to Control C Tongue Bend Twist. You can also observe that the lip control frames have an additional thickness option in the latest version compared to the old one. So, what does it mean that the joint counts, controller names, and the number of controllers differ? Yes, it indicates that the logic involved in the rigs is also different. When you load the latest DNA into the DNA editor, you'll see that it has a total of 814 logics, whereas the old DNA only has 734 logics. So, is the latest DNA always better? I can't give a definitive yes answer at this moment. Most of you have been using the old DNA, and even the DNA calibration library from Epic Games continues to distribute the older versions. Therefore, it might be impractical for you to switch all your current characters or custom templated DNA to the latest version. I recommend that you continue using the DNA you've been using while also building your database based on the latest DNA. The latest GUI and assembler script we provide are pre-configured to work with the latest MetaHuman settings found in the bridge. As of now, there isn't an officially released GUI or assembler script that can correctly interpret the latest DNA, which is why we've prepared this for you. Please make sure to use them correctly. Now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I'll be explaining the automation of the MetaHuman Unreal settings that we've prepared this time. We've continuously shared everything related to Unreal settings in our previous videos. If anyone is having trouble understanding this video, please refer to the earlier ones. For now, the scene I've prepared here only has the body skeletal mesh and head skeletal mesh loaded. There are no additional settings applied yet. Oh, I haven't loaded the pose animation yet, right? Let's go ahead and load the pose animation. You're probably all familiar with the basic settings by now, so I'll quickly load the pose animation.
First, I'll switch the preview mesh of the pose animation to my current character. I'll also clean up and remove any unused preview meshes. Then, I'll change the retarget source asset to my current character as well. All right, if you've followed along up to this point, now please take the UA set folder we provided inside the TunaRig folder in your documents and add it to your project. In this version, the names of the existing templates have been changed to template. These templates must not be renamed under any circumstances. Previously in our guide, you may have manually assigned skeletons to these templates. And before applying them to the skeletal meshes here, you went through several complicated steps. During that process, you probably used the PSD toolset to correctly apply this to the ANIM blueprint, right? I'm sure you remember all of this. You would have also attached the relevant ANIM blueprint to the body skeletal mesh as a post-process ANIM blueprint. And inside that setup, you would have performed various manual settings. The same goes for the head mesh. You manually set everything from recompute tangent to build settings, default control rig, and post-process ANIM blueprint. And of course, you also loaded the DNA files like this. Now, let me show you which parts of this process have been automated in this version. Please turn on the MetaHuman Tools auto set. This tool is the automation tool we developed for this version. The first thing you need to check is the template exists check button. This function verifies whether the template files I showed earlier exist in your current project. These templates must be present for the automatic setup to proceed, which is why I emphasize not changing the template names. If you see the message template found, it means the templates have been recognized correctly. Next is your character's name. Let's enter the name of your character, which will serve as the prefix for all the assets that will be generated. Following that is the DNA path. You can copy the DNA file path by holding the shift key and right clicking on the file in Windows which will open a menu where you can copy the file path. Just paste it in, and it's okay whether or not you remove the semicolons at the beginning or end. After that, you need to bring in a blueprint. Since I don't have a blueprint actor set up in this project, I'll quickly set one up by copying any MetaHuman blueprint from this project. Great. Now that we've reached this point, let's select the Blueprint Actor Asset and press the Get Assets for Body and Face button. Unlike the PSD tool set, where you drag the assets into the scene, this time, you simply select the assets in the Content Browser. This will automatically load the character into the current scene. Since the character spawns at the 000 coordinate, I'll slightly adjust the position for better visibility. Now, you should be able to see that the tool has automatically recognized the skeletal meshes for both the body and face in their respective fields. Before we proceed to auto settings, you need to assign the body animation pose sequence to the body pose animation field. At this point, there is one more important thing to verify before clicking auto settings. Make sure all Python related plugins in your current project are enabled. Check if Python Automation Test, Python Foundation Packages, and Python Editor Script Plugin are all activated. If the engine needs to be restarted, go ahead and do so. If these Python-related plugins are not checked, there's a known bug where the engine might crash during the automatic setup process, so it's crucial to ensure they are all enabled. All right, now that all the preparations are complete, let's press the Auto Settings button. You may notice that the initial loading process might take a while. Once the setup is complete, you will see a message similar to what I've shown you. 
you'll also notice a newly created folder named AnimBP. This is where all the animation blueprints have been automatically set up and saved. Let's open one of these blueprints. The preview mesh won't automatically switch to your character, so we'll change that to match our character and check whether the pose asset has been correctly assigned. As you can see, it's marked in red with a 100% match. Some extra skeletal meshes might be cluttering the view, so let's clean those up. You'll notice that the pose asset path has been properly set to match our character. The red marking means everything has been accurately auto-assigned, except for the fingers, which are also set correctly. Let's open the head-related animation blueprint next. It may not show a full 100%, but as long as it's marked in red, everything is functioning correctly. Now, let's inspect the skeletal mesh. You'll see that the post-process on MVP has already been applied automatically. The build settings have full precise UVS and skin weight checked. And all lower LODS are set identically. The default control rig is also applied. However, for this automation process to work, your project must have at least one MetaHuman character. If you don't have one, you need to import at least one MetaHuman from the Bridge plugin so that the common folder gets created, allowing the default control rig to be applied. The same goes for the Faceboard rig. Here, you can see that the post process AnimBP has been automatically applied, right? It was automatically generated and applied. Even when you enable or disable it, there's no noticeable issue or glitch. Now, let's take a look at the head skeletal mesh. Similarly, you can see that the post process Anim BP has been automatically applied. In the case of the head, the material automatically has recompute tangent set. And what's more, it's automatically applied to all LODs. In previous tutorials, you might remember that the skin cache for the head skeletal mesh component was enabled in the character blueprint. However, this time, it wasn't manually set during the auto setup process. Instead, you'll notice that the skin cache has been enabled directly in the LOD info of the head skeletal mesh itself, and it's all automatically configured. Since the concept is the same, it doesn't really matter where it's applied. In the build settings, you can also see that, just like with the body, the UV and skin weights have been automatically checked. The default control rig has been automatically set up as well. And the post process NMBP is also automatically aligned. You can also see that the DNA has been automatically applied using the DNA path you entered earlier. If you check the AR kit animation, you'll find that it works perfectly fine. Now that we've confirmed everything, let's create a level sequence to perform a rigging test. So, this demonstrates that with just the MetaHuman Auto Set tool, you can complete all of these automatic settings. However, it's important to use this tool with the understanding that you should be able to manually configure all settings. That way, if any issues arise while using the tool, you'll know how to troubleshoot and identify where the problem occurred. Also, don't forget to check all the Python related plugins in the plugin settings before using the tool. All right, that wraps up the Tuna MetaPack 1.2 update notes. This update contains some very important information. When using these automation tools, including MeshWarp, it's best to thoroughly understand all the processes as shared in our initial tutorials 
before you begin. As I mentioned earlier, the ability to troubleshoot issues manually when they arise is the most important skill. Ultimately, all automation tools simplify tasks based on these principles. The core value lies in understanding how everything works. Sorry, I've talked a lot. We will continue to support you in using our tools as best as we can. We'll bring more helpful content in the next video. Thanks for watching.